welcome to this video on how to produce a case study exam answer examiners love to see. I am Clancy Pires, Senior Manager of Relationship Programs here at SEMA. SEMA case study exams are designed to test what you can in fact do and not just what you know. Therefore, you should be able to integrate the technical knowledge you have acquired from the three objective test subjects and apply them to the business and the scenario provided. On the other hand, case study exams test what the objective test exams cannot test. Therefore, case study exams are designed to test higher order cognitive or thinking skills, communication skills, ability to analyze complex and ambiguous situations, and your ability to justify recommendations. I intend to share with information covering five areas that will be helpful to produce a case study exam answer examiners love to see. An answer examiners love to see. What does it look like? Top five things you need to know to produce a good case study exam answer. Question practice. When to start it? What are the best practices in question practice? Critical success factors of a good case study exam answer. And finally, how your answer is marked. As a result, after watching this video, you will be able to understand what examiners look for in case study exam answers. Also, you will be able to identify essential information that is helpful producing a good answer and also develop key exam skills through question practice. An answer for the case study examinations will have to demonstrate the key features that are common for any written examination. An obvious, simple, and first requisite of a good answer is that the candidate has answered all the question requirements. This demonstrates that all requirements are correctly understood and interpreted. Hence, the answer is relevant and precisely addresses all the requirements. In other words, it answers exactly what the examiners have asked for. When it comes to the content of the answer, it should be logical and coherent, demonstrating understanding of the theories and they are applied well to a specific problem or the issue. If computations are used to support the points, they are of high standard of accuracy and the workings are easy to follow. A good answer is one that is also well presented. It conforms to the format required and in the business style, tone, and language. The appearance and the layout are clear and easy to follow. Short and concise sentences with less punctuation, headlines and subheadings, short paragraphs, separate paragraph for each point, and selective underlining are the other features that can be seen in a well-presented answer. A good answer demonstrates that it was produced within the allocated time. Hence, there is no evidence of rushing or bluffing towards the end of the answer. In essence, examiners would love to see answers where candidates demonstrate good technical understanding of the topic being tested through clear and comprehensive explanation and apply this technical understanding to the business and the particular scenario within the task. It should be stressed that the case study exams continue to be a test of candidates ability to deal with work-based tasks and challenges in a realistic context. Further, the examiner would love to see candidates demonstrate professional judgment in the application of the syllabus content. Therefore, examiners have instructed the markers to adopt a holistic approach to marking, which means that the answer to each subtask is read and judged on its merits. Therefore, the single common determinant of answers examiners love to see is that you should apply your technical understanding to the scenario. Candidates who simply summarize the technical content relating to a task 
are likely to score low marks. For example, a task could ask about the usefulness of a balanced scorecard in a specific situation. The marking scheme will generally allow some credit for a description of balanced scorecards so that candidates can state the aspects that make them either suitable or unsuitable for the proposed task. However, most marks will be allocated to the application of that technical understanding to the scenario. Indeed, a well-justified argument for or against applying the balanced scorecard approach to that scenario will provide all the assurance that is necessary that the candidate understands the underlying technical content. In order to produce an answer that the examiners love to see, there are few basic things you must be aware of and be familiar with. All three case study exams are similar in terms of assessment strategy, which is employment driven. However, to understand the exam expectations at each level, a useful place you may start with is the level specific role simulation or the persona within the exam blueprints. The simulation is made up of three broad parts. First, the role of finance. Second, the role simulated. Third, the job tasks simulated. The simulation will require candidates to demonstrate that they have acquired the knowledge, skills, and mindset of the SEMA finance professional, along with an appreciation of the impact of these features of the simulation, such as the context, organizational structures, environment, and ecosystem within which the organization operates. For instance, in the operational case study exam, the role simulated is that of an entry-level finance professional. We call him, for exam purposes, a finance officer or staff accountant who is responsible for planning and coordinating business operations through the preparation of budgets and other reports. The role focuses on short term, assisting with preparation of useful and relevant financial reports drawing upon data collected by the company information system. Within each operational case study examination, six co-activities will be assessed. These co-activities represent the tasks that are most frequent, critical, and important to the entry-level finance professional role. It will be very helpful for you to be familiar with the role and the job task simulated along with the co-activities and assessment outcomes in the case study exam you are preparing for. Please read the SEMA examination blueprint that are published for each level for comprehensive information about the role simulation at each level. You need to be in the mindset of the respective finance professional during your entire journey of learning and during the exam. The SEMA case study examinations are capstone examinations that are designed to demonstrate mastery of previously acquired knowledge, skills, and techniques, and the drawing together of these to provide solutions to unstructured problems. By their position and design, case study exams are synoptic. This means each case study exam combines the content covered in the three pillar subjects at the level into a single assessment. Key to achieving a passing score is to ensure that you have the technical knowledge and understanding of all of the syllabus topics included in each of the core activities. It is not sufficient to rely on the fact that you remember it from the objective test exams you have completed because the chances are you won't. Therefore, you need to revise technical material. And if you don't have the knowledge, obviously, you can't score well. You are expected to be able to apply your technical knowledge and also understanding within the case study context. Simply reproducing rote learned answers or pure knowledge of a topic area will score very few or no marks. The SEMA syllabus is designed to contain the syllabus topics 
that are grouped under the component and lead learning outcomes representing the body of technical knowledge, skills, or ability that a well-prepared candidate should be able to demonstrate at the end of the period of learning or during the objective test exams. On the other hand, the case study examination blueprint articulates the synoptic relationships across these pillars for the three levels. Its core activities are integrated and multidisciplinary. By completing the core activities, successful candidates will implicitly demonstrate not just the technical abilities, but all the required competencies and the mindset for that level. Therefore, to produce an answer examiner allows to see, you must be able to demonstrate the core activities and assessment outcomes in the case study examination blueprint applicable to the level of your exam. Core activities are the business related tasks that are common to the role being simulated and valued by employers. When these are performed satisfactorily, it will enable for you to demonstrate the assessment outcomes in the exam. A waiting range is given for each core activity. This represents the amount of time that will be allocated to each core activity in the examination. Assessment outcomes are a list that provides a clear assertion of what a SEMA qualified finance professional can do when the examination has been completed and what the assessment will be designed to measure. Assessment outcomes may provide a useful checklist of your exam readiness in terms of the technical knowledge and understanding within your case study exam context and it demystifies exams by revealing what is examinable. The third important resource that would be helpful to produce an answer examiners love to see is the performance descriptors, which are published for each case study examination. In the exam, if you have performed well across all co-activities, the performance descriptors will highlight what you should continue to do and which skills you can build on for future exams. If you have not reached the passing standard for one or more core activity, the performance descriptor provides guidance on the minimum level of performance you will need to achieve in order to meet the passing standard and will help guide further study. They will help identify where your performance in an individual core activity may have fallen short of the overall passing standard for the level of case study you set. Therefore, when preparing for the exam, you can use these performance descriptors to self-assess and benchmark your performance so that you may see what you need to achieve to become exam ready. They are best used in conjunction with the exam blueprint and all other study resources available for the case study exams. Therefore, I strongly recommend that you read the performance descriptors and understand well the characteristics that demonstrate your ability to meet the exam level passing standard for each of the core activities. Examiner's report is the fourth important resource that would help you produce an answer examiner love to see. SEMA publishes a very comprehensive examiner's report for each level and you may read it in the SEMA planner under the full post-exam support materials. In every examiner's report, you will find very useful information directly from the examiner. They include the main focus for each of the exam variant, the examiner's observations and feedback for each task for all exam variants, common mistakes made by candidates, and more importantly, their tips and advice for future candidates. For instance, in examiner's reports, examiners often mention that taking a non-targeted approach to an issue and commenting on everything that you know about it from a theoretical point of view will score few marks. Examiners expect you to be able to explain with clarity and comprehensively 
rather than making unsupported state. In your case study exam, you may be asked to produce an answer using various formats such as report, email, briefing note, memo, or a discussion paper. Report is one of most common formats you are required to produce your answer. Briefing notes are usually short papers that quickly and effectively inform the reader, often a decision maker, about an issue. Briefing notes give someone a short, clear, and concise version of the key points and considerations about an issue. Memos are used to remind people about something. Usually, they are used internally within a company. A discussion paper should give its readers a thorough understanding of a topic. It needs to cover all issues from all angles and perspectives so that an informed decision can be made. The format of your discussion paper will be similar to that of a report with an introduction, then the body of your discussion paper where you could divide this into arguments for and arguments against, and finally, a conclusion with or without recommendations. Be familiar with different answer formats you may be required to use in your case study examination. Question practice is the single best exam preparation tactic through which you can develop the exam skills needed to produce an answer the examiner would love to see. This is what the operational case study examiner had to say about question practice. I quote, practice, practice, practice past operational case study exam tasks. Whilst this is a new syllabus and new blueprint, many of the old P1 tasks and number of the old F1 tasks are still relevant. Practicing past tasks and then checking against the published answers will help you to understand what the examiner is looking for, unquote. This is an extract from the examiner report for the May and August 2020 operational case study exam. This advice is applicable to all levels of case study exams. Many students think that it is a waste of time to analyze the pre-scene of past exams and answer variants to time as they will have to answer questions on a pre-seen material and a scenario that is applicable to the exam they have booked for. Please remember that all past case study exam materials have gone through a rigorous quality assurance process and obviously written by the same examiner of your exam. Therefore, there are no other materials better than the past case exams materials for you to acquire and improve your exam skills. The next important question is, when is the right time to practice questions and develop exam skills? The answer to this question is in line with the Pareto principle. 80% impact on your exam success can be attributed to what you do before you get to the pre-scene of the exam you have booked. In other words, the most useful exam preparation can be done with past case study exams materials even before you get to the pre-scene of the exam you have booked to take. Why do I say this? I will give you a couple of reasons and benefits of starting your preparation way before you get to the pre-scene materials. First, you need to be familiar with the format, structure, and content of the CMA case study exams. This is not only applicable to candidates who take case study exams for the first time. As I explained before, each level case study exam has got unique features, especially in terms of role simulation and the nature of the tasks you are expected to perform. Secondly, Application of the knowledge to the scenario is key to achieving a passing score. Clearly, where there are gaps in knowledge, application is not possible, and therefore it is important for candidates to ensure that their knowledge base is complete. Starting early will give you time and opportunity to identify syllabus topics 
you need to revise or relearn. Thirdly, you need to develop pre-scene analysis skills. That is how to analyze a pre-scene in such a way that you understand and remember the key themes. Examiners stress that demonstrating good technical understanding is not enough on its own to pass. Candidates need to demonstrate technical understanding in the context of the scenario and the particulars of the issue being addressed. Information given to the candidates is part of the task is there for a reason and should be as far as possible incorporated into the answers along with relevant information from the pre-scene. Fourthly, case study exams are time restricted. They are for producing answers to time for past case study exam variants will definitely help you master your time management skills together with writing and presentation skills and perhaps your typing speed too. There is a detailed case study exam readiness checklist that will guide you through all the necessary steps and actions you may take to prepare well for your case study exams. Therefore, you may use this checklist as the basis on which you may prepare your own study and revision timetable. I recommend you allocate time in your study plan to analyze at least three pre-seen materials from past case study exams using the same approach and tools I'm going to briefly explain later in this video. This will help you to improve your pre-seen analysis skills. I further recommend that you produce timed answers for at least two variants connected to each of the past case study exam pre-seen materials you analyzed. This is equivalent to doing six mock exams or six practice exams. And importantly, they all are free of charge as these materials are available in the SEMA planner for you to download and use. After producing an answer to time for a given variant, the next important step is to obtain feedback. If you have someone capable of going through your answer and give you feedback, that would be great. It could be a tutor or a friend who have recently sat and passed the case study exam or even your study buddy. It is important that you specifically ask them to give you qualitative feedback, especially in line with the reference to the performance descriptors. Ask them to tell you three good things you have demonstrated in your answer so that you may further develop them. Also ask them to comment on three areas for you to improve. In case if you don't have anyone to ask feedback from, you may self-assess the answers you produced. Here are a few tips that may be helpful. In terms of timing and planning, did you finish too early? Did you overrun? Did you waffle in terms of the answer content? Did you struggle with interpreting the questions? Or did you struggle understanding the subject or remembering what you have studied earlier? In terms of answer layout, was your answer difficult to follow? Did you fail to address each subtask? Were your workings or sentences unclear? Then you may refer to the suggested answers and mark scheme. Play the role of a marker by self-marking your answer. You may use the performance descriptors to identify any areas where you may improve. You may reflect on this feedback before you produce a timed answer to the next variant. This will enable you to progressively improve your exam skills, thereby enhancing your ability to produce answers examiners love to see. Analyzing pre-scenes of past case study exam materials and producing time answers to past variants will let you follow the right approach, use the right tools, and be in the correct management accounting mindset to analyze the pre-scene materials for the case study exam you have booked. 
by the time you get to the pre-scene of the exam you are going to take, your level of confidence in producing answers with a passing score will be higher. As a result, with this acquired level of confidence and exam skills, now you can allocate more time, more effort and energy to analyze the pre-scene, do industry research and practice time mock exams based on the pre-scene of the exam you are going to take. I consider three factors critical in producing a case study exam answer that the examiners love to see. First, analysis of pre-scene. Second, understand the question requirement. Third, planning the answer. There are plenty of resources in the SEMA planner about these three critical success factors. Just to remind you, I'm going to mention the key highlights especially what the examiners had to say. Regarding the pre-scene, this is what the examiner had to say as I quote from the examiner's report. To produce a good case study exam answer, you must have analyzed the pre-scene material in depth. Ensure that you are very familiar with the business, especially the financial information before the exam, as this will help you with applying your knowledge and will save you time. Similarly, an awareness of the industry that the business is in will help you to think of the wider issues that might impact on decisions that you could be asked to comment on." Unquote. It is important to stress that you are not expected to remember all what is in the pre-scene. Instead, Remembering the key themes of the pre-scene will be enough. Therefore, instead of just reading the pre-scene a couple of times while underlining and annotating, you should smart read the pre-scene and analyze it. You may aim to analyze the pre-scene in two rounds. When you read the pre-scene for the first time, you, your aim should be to identify the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats of the organization in the scenario. In your second reading, begin to consider why you think they are strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. After reading the pre-scene smartly twice, now you must have a detailed SWOT with your own reasoning and a list of key issues, issues such as business issues, ethical issues, financial issues, performance issues of the organization, and of course, a list of risks facing the organization. Try to understand your role and apply your role within the organization and understand your relationship to other stakeholders. In other words, assume that you are preparing for a job interview where the exam is the job interview itself. There are more resources in the SEMA planner with detailed advice and guidance as to what you should and should not do when you analyze the pre-scene. The second critical success factor is to understand question requirement. That is, do exactly what examiners have asked. As the management case study examiner states, as always, the key to achieving a passing mark or better was to answer the question as set. Higher marks were awarded to fuller answers that were relevant and correct. Examiners and markers have reported they observed many examples where candidates answered the task that they had prepared for and wished they had been asked rather than what they were in fact asked. Preparation ahead of sitting of the exam is to be applauded, but you need to be mindful that you must tailor your answer to address the task given to you in the exam requirements. If a task asks for the benefits of activity-based costing for cost control, then it is pointless explaining the benefits for pricing or problems associated with activity-based costing because 
there will be no marks for this. You need to read the task very carefully to ensure that you do not end up wasting time by providing irrelevant information in your answer. The question requirements in case study exams are conversational. For instance, the requirement states, I need your opinion. To interpret and understand exactly what the examiner expects in your answer, your understanding of the role simulation, co-activities and assessment outcomes will be extremely helpful. Sometimes the verbs are explicit in the question requirement. In the operational case study exam, many of the tasks require explanation and to achieve a passing score, it is expected that this will be clear and comprehensive. It should also be an explanation rather than a description. Discuss is another common verb that is aimed to test your analytical skills. In order to discuss something, there needs to be an argument. In other words, you need two or more differing or opposing viewpoints. As the examiner stresses, all answers are marked on their own merits, but material that is correct, but nevertheless largely irrelevant will not score well. Therefore, for your answer to be relevant, you must have understood exactly what the examiner has asked you to do. The third critical factor of producing an answer with a passing score is planning the answer. The finance function has transformed into a value center from a cost center. So management accountants are hired to create and preserve value. Therefore, cognitive or thinking skills are key to employment. As a result, case study exams are designed to mimic the world of work so that it can test intellectual or thinking skills which you are expected to demonstrate through your answer. This is the examiner's advice regarding answer planning. It is important to take time to plan your answer so that you are able to apply your knowledge to the specifics of the case. I suggest that for certain tasks, you plan your answer in the answer screen itself. For example, if you are asked for the potential benefits and problems of activity-based costing, I suggest that you first note down headings for benefits and problems. Under each heading, list your benefits and problems. This will become your subheadings. Then you can write a short paragraph under each subheading. This will allow you time to think about all the points that you want to make and will help to give your answer a clear format. Ultimately, it should save you time. So this is what the examiners had to say. I recommend that you should allocate first one third of the time allowed for a question to think and plan the answer. For example, if it is a question for 45 minutes, I recommend that you allocate the first 15 minutes to think and plan the answer. By any means, it is not a waste of time at all. Instead, it improves the quality of your answer. We have published walkthrough answers. These are the answers produced by students in the case study exams with a passing score. As you see, they are concise, yet addresses the question requirements precisely. They have a logical flow, easy to follow and well presented. The single reason behind these answers is that the candidates have planned these answers well. Once you read the question, your brain immediately starts processing to generate thoughts. But all these thoughts on the one hand are not relevant and on the other hand, not in the right sequence to be lined up in your answer. Therefore, answer planning will help you to sift through your thoughts to identify what you will include and in which order in your answer.
I'm sure it will be helpful to know how your answers are marked. So let me explain this briefly. The nature of the case study examination tasks mean that a range of responses will be valid. CIMA uses levels-based marking scheme and the descriptors within it are holistic. This means markers read your answer in full. Then they select the most relevant level to the answer out of the three levels using a best fit approach. The answer does not need to meet all the criteria of the level descriptor. It should be placed at the level when it meets more of the criteria of this level than the criteria of the other levels. If the answer is on the borderline between two levels, then the markers are instructed to place either at the top of the lower band or the bottom of the higher band, depending on where it fits best. Once markers have selected the level, then they will need to choose the mark to apply. A small range of marks may be given at each level. Markers are allowed to use their professional judgment to decide which mark to allocate. For instance, if the answer is of high quality and convincingly meets the requirements of the level, then the markers award the highest mark available. Marking schemes can accommodate a range of acceptable responses. Where markers are in doubt as to the application of the marking scheme to a candidate script, they consult their lead marker. This means there is no one correct answer for CMA case study exams. And your common sense, general knowledge, work experience, together with appropriate technical knowledge of the syllabus topics are useful ingredients in producing a good answer. The markers are subject to extensive training and ongoing monitoring in order to ensure that judgments are being made correctly and consistently. Markers are instructed to apply their marking schemes positively so that candidates are rewarded for what they have demonstrated and not penalized for omissions. All marks on the scheme are designed to be awarded and full marks should be awarded when all level descriptor criteria are met. It is quite obvious that an answer which does not address the requirements of the task is awarded zero marks. It must be stressed that the marking scheme and indicative answers are provided as a guide to markers. They are not intended to be exhaustive and other valid approaches must be rewarded. Equally, you are not expected to make all the points mentioned in the indicative answers to receive the highest level of the marking scheme. Here are a few helpful hints and tips that will help you to produce answers examiners love to see. Firstly, think about your audience. Is it for the board of directors, employees at a similar level to you or an external party? Can you assume that the audience are all accounting finance staff or will some readers of the report have little or no accounting background? If this is the case, you will need to think about the technical detail you use and explain it clearly and concisely. Secondly, think why are you writing the report? What is the purpose of the report? Have you been asked to present some information and or data? Do you need to give recommendation on how to resolve an issue? Make sure that your report covers exactly what you have been asked to do in the requirement. Thirdly, while you are producing the answer, Keep reminding yourself about the purpose and the audience. Don't get bogged down in detail which is not relevant. You may want to summarize what you think are the key points in your conclusion. Make sure you read through your full answer. 
now is the time to edit or add anything. Finally, let me remind you the top three important things to remember about producing a case study exam answer your examiner will love to see. Firstly, allocate adequate time for question practice. As I explained, start as early as you can. Your aim must be to identify knowledge gaps, take actions to bridge them, develop exam skills by the time you get to the pre-scene that is applicable for the exam you are going to take. Remember, 80% of impact on your exam success depends on all what you do before you start analyzing the pre-scene of your exam. Make sure you use past exam resources as a great tool to develop exam skills. Secondly, if you do not understand syllabus material, then you risk producing answers that are technically incorrect. As examiners observed in their reports, sometimes candidates attempt to compensate for lack of knowledge in one area by offering extensive summaries of related material. For example, some candidates who seem to be unclear about the valuation of goodwill on acquisition attempted to compensate by offering a general description of the consolidation process instead. Clearly, where there are gaps in knowledge, application is not possible. And therefore, it is important for you to ensure that your knowledge base is complete. Thirdly, it is very important to note that the case study format of the examination focuses on application rather than recall of technical content. Again, as examiners stress, demonstrating good technical understanding is not enough on its own to pass. You need to demonstrate technical understanding in the context of the scenario and the particulars of the issue being addressed. Information given to candidates as a part of the task is there for a reason and should be as far as possible incorporated into the answers, along with relevant information from the pre -seed. Application to the scenario is key to achieving a passing score. I am sure you have got useful information and guidance on how to produce a SEMA case study exams answer that examiners love to see. Here are the various ways to reach us if you require any further guidance. Our contact section of our website allows you to contact your local SEMA office. At the very bottom of the page, look out for the live chat icon, which proves a particularly effective way to receive an instant response from SEMA. We would also suggest following us on social media as we used to deliver messages and important information from time to time. Finally, from all of us here at SEMA, we send you very best wishes for success of your SEMA case study exams. Thank you.